Hello everybody and how are you? My hair is touching this curtain behind me. Moon Moon is here to join us for a minute apparently. As you can probably see I am back in Germany. And the nicest thing about being back is that I get to have my pets back. Ah. I know I just haven't been online a lot. I mean I have been but not as often as I normally would be for the last few weeks so I thought I would just fill you in and elucidate a little bit about what I've been up to. It's been a very busy time. It's been adventurous. It's been full of things and stuff and going places. I have not gone away. I am not abandoning you and I'm sorry if you've missed me. I've certainly missed you. Go away car. It's been a quite crazy few weeks um, and it's only going to get crazier I suppose. Woo! Anyway, got to keep things interesting, right? Uh -huh. So this video, maybe it'll be two videos, I don't know, will be sort of, uh, there's a couple of vlogs that I tried to make that weren't really successful. So I'll show you that, plus I'll just tell you what I've been up to. So when was the last time we spoke? So you may know that after a mere 10 years of legal drama and visa bullshit, I finally finally was able to visit the UK. <laughs> uh, hopefully means I should be able to go back more or less any time I'd like to. I didn't really have any plans while I was there. I just wanted to be there. I just wanted to be. Does that make any sense? I just wanted to be in my favorite place. I just wanted to go to all my old haunts. I just wanted to catch up with my old friends and I did and it was magical. I spent a month in a kind of dream. It was just wonderful. I spent about two weeks just in Edinburgh. I think I was there for that long. I ran into quite a lot of you there who live in Edinburgh. I spent a few days down in London. Woo! London gave me some serious anxiety. I'd really planned to do like a meet and greet type thing there and that's gonna, I'm afraid, have to wait till next time I visit. Twice when I went out into the city I like nearly had a panic attack just from all the people. <gasps> I don't know, I don't remember it being that big. Or maybe it's just that I'm not used to big cities anymore. I don't know. But that's never really bothered me before. But uh, yeah, just all like the people everywhere, just this like wall of activity on either side of me really got to me. <laughs> but I had a nice time there. I met up with friends and it was all rather lovely. Since I got back, I've been away on two short trips. I've hardly been home actually. A couple of days after I came back, I immediately went with a group of friends to Ghent in Belgium. It was this crazy adventure where nobody slept for about three days. <laughs> we were all very tired to take part in my friend Valentine Winter's first ever fashion show as a designer. I was really honored to be a part of that and the event that we went to was called Danza della Luna. It was absolutely beautiful. Like I had no idea what to expect. Uh, with this thing I just I had agreed to go a few months before and he made this dress for me this like baroque style dress which was just incredible um, you might see there's a couple of pictures up on Instagram here's a little bit of video here's here's the video from the fashion show in Ghent just so you can have a wee look <laughs> journey to get there like I had planned to vlog the entire thing but the whole group of people I was with but most of the time we were like not wearing any makeup and were feeling tired and falling asleep on the train and you know not only is that not very good entertainment but I don't think anybody including me really wants to be filmed. So after that I was home for a couple of days and then I took another trip <laughs> to the other side of the country also attempted to vlog that was not successful it was raining outside a lot and Eh, um, just wasn't successful. But anyway, I went to an event that I had been looking forward to for absolutely months, which was the Solar Lodge convention in Bochum. If you don't know what Solar Lodge is, Moon Moon, what are you doing? It is a record label that represents several of my favorite bands. Like, uh, I think every band that Solar Lodge represents is really, really good. Like, it's really just the kind of music I like. And every time I see that they've signed a new band, like, I know that I'll like it. <laughs> so I'd been really looking forward to the show and I got given tickets, so I was like really, really stoked. So I went all the way back across the country to see Eon Sable play and one of my favorite bands of all time, Merciful Nuns. You probably know, you probably hear them in my videos a lot. You've 
I've been to see them like four times now I think and it was really emotional because that's probably the last time I'll ever get to see them play because they're splitting up. I think they might have maybe one or two more shows booked but I think that's that's it. Who doesn't love standing in the rain with their little tartan umbrella? I had about an hour's sleep last night. I took a seven hour bus trip today from Leipzig to Borkum. Is that my taxi? Please be my taxi. I'm here like an hour after I wanted to be. Honestly, like when I was watching them play, like right at the very end, I was, <laughs> I like nearly cried. I was so emotional. I was like, this is a moment where I am seeing one of my favorite bands play for the last time. I'm a bit of an idiot. I didn't even think of asking any of my friends who lived in the area if I could stay at their place. I just saw that like all the accommodation was sold out nearby. So um, I ended up staying at this kind of budget hotel in the middle of nowhere, but it was really beautiful. It was all full of these beautiful mirrors and old portraits and it was in this really old stone building. And there was, I woke up in the morning and there was this river right beside my window and there was a horse and trees and it was really, really nice. So that's what I've been doing. Um, not just that, but there's a whole lot of legal shit coming up, which I'm sure you're probably not that interested in. Big and stressful and risky. If you're interested, I'll probably be, you know, explaining it more on Patreon. So for those of you who follow me on Patreon, those of you will be privy <laughs> to the super exciting information of all like the, the fun legal stuff that I'm getting up to over the next few months. It's all very big and risky and god I hope everything works out. I really do because it has to. <laughs> also about to um, enter into the wonderful world of getting a divorce. If you've been a subscriber for a long time you'll know that it was about a year ago that I made that you know breakup video uh, so we had to be separated for a year before we could get a divorce so <sighs> getting a divorce. Cool so that's always fun. Who doesn't love getting a divorce? I don't have a heck of a lot of time to get a whole lot of stuff done because in the next couple of weeks I'm actually in just under two weeks I think I'm going to New Zealand. <laughs> I'm going back to New Zealand for a while to see Mr. Owl and to see my family and to have Christmas and all that kind of thing. So it should be nice. So I've got a heck of a lot of stuff to do here first. When I'm not busy trying to work things out I'm stuck in this kind of like crisis. I'm doing that thing where I've just sort of seized up <laughs> with the knowledge of all the things that I have to do. Does that ever happen to you or is <laughs> that just me? Like sometimes when I have a lot of things to do that are really important I just kind of seize up <laughs> and can't really think or do anything. So as for the other unsuccessful vlog, uh, just before I left Edinburgh I wanted to sort of show you a bit of the city. I was like I said I was there for a couple of weeks and it is my favorite place on earth. Really really good to be back there. Like um, I'd spent a year and a half there ten years ago. It was one of the happiest times of my life and when I went back I accepted that you know things were going to be different and like, it'll never be the same blah 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 but honestly it really was quite the same like it was a lot of the same people around obviously that some things were different but and in, in essentially it, it was the same it was absolutely magical and I really felt um at home there I felt very relaxed spiritually relaxed and my anxiety just went out the window I can't explain it as soon as I got back here I immediately started to feel like shit again I don't know why maybe it's just so I just wanted to show you a little bit of the city, some of the stuff that I think is interesting. There's a lot to see and a lot to talk about there. So with a bit of luck I'll be back there in a few months. Uh -huh, knock on wood. So here's a couple of the things that I wanted to show you while I was in Edinburgh. <laughs> Favorite city in the world. Hopefully, I'll be able to come back 
in a few months. It's sunny right now, as you can possibly see, which is quite a rarity for Edinburgh, so I thought we'll make the most of it. Go for a bit of a wander, have we look around. I'm so sad about going back tomorrow. Yeah, I have to get, I have to get up really early tomorrow and fly back to Germany. Um, I'm just sad, I can't think about it. Nidri Street has its own unique perfume. Oh, I love it here. I love it's every crooked cobble and puddle of bin juice. Ah, oh, there's some... Please don't. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm busy. I've got no time for dancing. On your right, you will see the Banshee Labyrinth, Scotland's most haunted pub. What bothers me a lot is the fact that there should be an apostrophe right there. Anyway, that's not the point. I love this bar. This is my favourite bar. I've been here several times in the last couple of weeks. When I was here 10 years ago, it was called Nicol Edwards because it's built over the remains of Nicol Edwards' house, which is deep down under the ground. He was the Lord Provost of Edinburgh. If you want to know more about him, look him up. He was an evil guy. <laughs> He was quite an evil man so for all we know the whole area could be haunted by his ghost and he liked to perform his own witch trials in his home which used to be here before this whole structure was built that was like oh that was several hundred years ago so all the pubs down the street report seeing ghosts and some have even caught ghosts on camera the one down the bottom of the street bannerman's bar has caught the watcher on tape on the security tape he's probably one of the best known ghosts oh my god i think i found oh i did i found my old flat i found my old apartment it was that one right there underneath there used to be a tailor's now there's like i don't know a jewelry store and an indian restaurant but it used to be just a tailor's that was my front door i think one of these blue ones here i thought it would be nice to take you in here to greyfriars kirkyard which is a little bit famous it's famous here for greyfriars blowy if you're familiar with that story it's a lovely little story of a wee dog who was very loyal to his owner and sat on his grave for years after he died until the dog died himself isn't that nice and cheerful just a reminder this will one day be you we found voldemort's grave <laughs> <laughs> and found moody and tiny little one up here McGonagall. <laughs> all the potter names so apparently there aren't actually that many gravestones in this area this place is in fact more or less a mass grave like there are way 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 more bodies in this graveyard than it appears to be so pretty much anywhere you stand you're standing on someone's body cool huh isn't that nice also another fun fact about this graveyard is that well I mean I don't know if this is entirely true but this is what I've heard is that in the past people would often be buried quite shallow not six feet down more like one to three feet down kind of thing and that on a particularly wet marshy day one could walk along and find bones poking out of the ground isn't that nice sleep tight everyone these two cages on the ground here are actually pretty interesting these are called mort safes and these were put in place in the days when body snatching was a very real problem like this around the 1820s in particular having a freshly dug up corpse sold to the local medical college for students to learn on was pretty common. These mort safes were placed over graves so that body snatchers or resurrection men couldn't come and dig them up. Isn't that nice? Oh there's actually a little piece of information here. This iron mort safe was placed over the grave to prevent the grave robbers from digging up the body for sale to the anatomy classes in the matter school school. Fascinating. It's really weird. I, I totally took names from this place for my book and it's funny because I can't find them now. I'm absolutely, I'm pretty sure it was the cemetery, pretty sure it was Greyfriars that I got a name or two from and now I can't seem to find them. This is the very old and extremely beautiful St. Giles Cathedral, which I understand is the only church in the world where you will find stained glass windows featuring angels playing bagpipes. This area here is where the old toll booth prison used to be, and possibly also where executions were taken out, I might be wrong. But there used to be a grisly, horrible debtor's prison here. I think it was a debtor's prison. I need to get my facts straight. I'm a bit rusty. This car park used to be a churchyard. The bodies were picked up from here and taken to Greyfriars, where we've just been. There is one person still buried in here. I'm not exactly sure where. And that is the grave of John Knox. If you're familiar with Christian history, you all know who he was. He was like a cornerstone of the Presbyterian faith. And I believe because it was his last will and testament, he's like the 
the last is the only person still buried here somewhere in this car park found it the above stone marks the approximate site of the burial of saint giles graveyard of john knox the great scottish divine who died november 1572 goodness me so yeah he's the last body left in this former cemetery <laughs> this doodad here is called the Mercat cross i'm not exactly sure what it's all about but one of the things i've heard about it is that way in the way back in the day if you were very naughty and you owed money or something or other as a form of public humiliation you had your earlobe nailed to the door <laughs> and this was of course in the days before such a thing as hammers with the claws on the end so if you wanted to get away often people would just rip their head away leaving their earlobe behind times you know where there seems to be something written in the stars I know whether or not you believe in that sort of thing but I feel like this is one of those periods of change um, I don't know if I'm imagining that but I feel like a lot of people I know are going through like huge shifts in their lives right now maybe that's the case with you too I don't know I feel like it's it's one of those times like there's something in the air I think things should be pretty interesting <laughs> for the rest of the year and for the beginning of next year um, I hope you've been good and whatever you've been up to has been successful oh oh the other thing is i've been really 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 focused on finishing my novel i don't know if you remember but a few weeks months ago i said that it was my goal to finish my novel by the end of this year my first draft at least and suddenly it's halfway through november and i'm like oh <laughs> it's become a serious threat so weirdly the knowledge that people around the world are doing you know remo this month national novel writing month has kind of motivated me to like work really hard on it so i've been like making myself sit down every day and do like methodical like a big chunk of it and i'm, I'm actually getting through it it's going to be finished <laughs> it's going to be done are any of you doing NaNoWriMo or any of you doing that challenge where you have to write a 50,000 word novel in one month because I've always kind of wanted to do it just looks like fun anyway my battery is about to die which is awesome things are going to be really really busy if you want to keep up with me and the stuff that I'm doing all the time I often post stories to Instagram so just give me a follow on Instagram if you like why not it's fun anyway if you have not already done so please subscribe to my channel you know you want to so thank you so much for listening to me babble it's been nice to uh, have you here and as always take care of yourselves be nice to each other and I'll see you next time bye